Hello, everybody, and welcome to Daily Coaching. Daily Coaching are currently hosting a number of discussions with ex-professionals and current professionals within football um, and discussing their kind of journeys from when they first started out, so the grassroots side of football, um, all the way up to that first team, um, and kind of talking about some of their experiences of being coached throughout those different um, phases of football. Um, I'm delighted to announce today with us that we have Louis Binks, um, who's currently playing for Montreal Impact. Um, and what I'm going to ask Louis to do, first of all, is just talk about his journey of how he first of all got into football. So like I said, that real grassroots stage um, and then kind of leading us up to where we are now. So Louis, over to you and obviously thank you for joining us here today. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, nice. Been a different journey, not one that I thought would ever happen. But no, I was at grassroots football until the age of eight. Um, Went on trial with a few teams, uh, Chelsea, other places, but I never and Tottenham, and I never felt like anywhere was as good as what Tottenham was. Um, so I signed for Tottenham at the age of eight, and I was there all the way up until second year scholar. Um, I got offered a professional contract, but I just felt I needed to play football. Um, I was getting as a second year, I was playing in the twenty threes and. The 23s league was not somewhere where I wanted to be. I didn't think I could learn a lot, lot more from it. Um, playing against play, younger boys playing up in the 23s, older boys playing in the 23s who don't want to be there. It's not a good, good environment. So I just felt it was the right time to move on. And then the opportunity come about with working with Omri um, at Montreal, and it was just, just something I couldn't really, couldn't really turn down working with someone like him. Nice. Um, again, I think one of the main reasons why I've got you on here as well is it's such, like you said, an interesting journey which you've taken um, and yeah. that's a big credit to yourself. Um, before we get into the bits of where you are now and um, a bit of the later stage of the development, um, take it all the way back to sort of that grassroots level then. So um, what was the kind of team you were playing for at a grassroots level and what was it like being picked up so young? Because there's a big sort of thing, especially now within coaching, that, you know, yeah. What is the right age to get picked up by a club, and is it too early for players? What was it like for your experiences? Yeah, it was obviously I was eight years of age, which was seems like a very long time ago now. Um, but it's just I think it's a very good good thing being that young, getting picked up because where you come through the whole way, you get to see a lot of boys come come in, go. So you learn a lot uh, just from like players getting released around you and. Once, when when I did get to the full time stage, it was a big big uh, that credit to my family, me for going all the way through. But I don't feel there's a right age of going to an academy. Um, I've seen boys come in at first year scholar, and it's their first year in professional like environment. Um, but yeah, there's no no right or wrong. There's a few boys now in the first team at Tottenham who have come through with me since the age of eight so yeah there's no no right or wrong like my cousin's at Crystal Palace he's only 10 and he he's enjoying it so yeah to me there's no right age when you go to an academy I think you're right I think it is very much down to the individual um, and um, I think it's very much down to the environment as well and I don't necessarily mean the environment is just set alone by the club because obviously you know they'll like you said they'll experience loads of boys or girls throughout their, yeah. their club but I think it's if there's that match um, and I think especially credit to your journey from like you said being at Tottenham at such a young age up to mm. such an older age group um, you know there was obviously that match in terms of you fitted their vision of what a Tottenham player looks like um, and obviously yeah. from your perspective as well you must have enjoyed playing your football there um, what was the kind of main difference between, because obviously when you're so young as well, you're still not only learning the game, but you're also playing it for enjoyment and fun, I'm taking it. What was the kind of difference at Tottenham? Was you kind of, not pressured, but was there more structural coaching there rather than, say, for example, when you're playing at your, your grassroots team? Yeah, a lot, a lot more. I say Tottenham is one of the best academies in Europe with the best coaches, best facilities. So it is very professional in their ways from structured chat training to what you do after training before training um but yeah some some players enjoy that but I think I had the as well as playing for them I played for my school my district my county so that was my sort of enjoyment as well playing with friends and that was a bit of a I'd say a bit of a release for me to go and play there and just enjoy myself because it can be very 
even at a young age, very demanding. Every day you go to school, you go get home from school, you eat in the car, you go to training, you don't get back until nine o'clock at night. And it is very, and when you're there, you know, you want to train well because I don't know, your mum and dad, they've took time off work to take you. Even at a young age, you, you do feel the, you do feel pressure a little bit. Yeah, no, I agree. I think as well, something that I often talk about is there is no uh, formula to make a professional because obviously like we said, there'll be different ways in which people make it um, or, or don't unfortunately make it. But I think there's a mixture of talent, motivation and opportunity because, yeah. you know, people get picked up based on their ability and, and that's just how football is um, and how kind of cutthroat it is as well. But then at the same time, like you just said there about parents, I think it's so often you know, underestimate how much of a big impact parents are in terms of taking here yeah. and there and different places. The, like I said, even, even little things like from away from football, feeding you the right foods, making you disciplined and saying yeah. you've got to go training rather than going out with, with friends. So I think that's a yeah. big, massive part of it. I was very lucky to have that with my mum, dad, granddad, uncle. Everyone was, have been in a football environment all their life. So they knew what, what was right for me. And, even me growing up, I knew what was what I should do, what I shouldn't do. And yeah, it's definitely, definitely helped me. Yeah. And I think even as well, which is quite nice to hear as well, the mix of football, like you said, so you're obviously playing for Tottenham in within their sort of like competitive structure, but then also at the same time being able to play for your school. And I think, I agree, I think playing for fun and just recreational purposes is number one, where you get to really express yourself and, and be free playing football. Yeah. But then you've also got that discipline and that sort of, you know, longer term goal at, at the academy yeah. as well. Um, what was it like when you was at the academy and kind of getting closer towards sort of, you know, that older age group, if you want to call it that? I mean, obviously, Tottenham will have a way of playing and a style of play. Um, was yeah. that kept pretty consistent throughout or did your sort of game change at all or your position even change at all? Yeah, no, it changed a lot. I say when I was... When I first joined, I was more more of a midfielder, quite big for my age, and not very like the Tottenham. I say the Tottenham player is someone who's very nimble, very technically good, and I I didn't fit that at all. Um, but then as I got older, I did develop more to a centre half, and I say that was for the better. And they did have they had coaches there that were brilliant for me, who helped me make that transition. And um, yeah, I'd say I have to thank them a lot for what they've done for me. Nice. And again, you mentioned it earlier on but about being within an environment. I think this is why it's so important as well. I think there's a lot of young children who get so influenced by badges in terms of, yeah. you know, oh, this club's after me, that club's after me. And it's almost like almost too overwhelming for them to decide where and who to go to. But I think one of the good things about big clubs is that obviously you know that they're going to have structures in place which will allow them to kind of effectively help you develop almost so I think like you said in terms of having coaches like the ones who will be employed by Tottenham it's going to yeah. obviously impact on your development um, and when obviously like you said you was going into that especially like that real top uh, bit just below the first into like the 23s um, yeah what was the sort of coaching and setup like there? because obviously you're going in from your point of view it's you know your, your development um, and obviously I'm sure Tottenham see it as that and I've heard great things about the way Tottenham sort of readily develop their players for that first team approach but you know was you being sort of sent out there and having a mindset of um you know playing a certain way or was it still just purely about the development so not based on potentially the teams you're playing against bit of both really um they never really Tottenham always say it's you're in a team but you're also doing it for yourself because yeah. you, you never know the the manager's watching I know Pochettino was at a lot of the games watching and you'd always have that in the back of your head, knowing that although the team you're in a team, if you get beat, I don't know, two nil, but you've had a good game for a defender, that's not great. But if he, if he's watching, he might see something that you've done. You might have led. You might have won won all your headers. So there is that individual element that you've got to play well because the manager's not going to take the if you win the game, but you play terrible, the manager's not going to take the whole team. He's going to take the individual that's done well. So there is always that riding on it that you've got to play well for yourself because the manager's watching. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that as well. I think that, you know, we talk about football as a team game, but I do agree, especially in terms of that. Listen, I would say until you reach that first team level, it is not about that. You know, it's about no. playing as a team, of course, we get that, but it is about yeah. your own independent self. And like you said, 
you would have seen hundreds, probably even thousands of people come in and out of those doors throughout your mm. time there. So if yeah. you're not focusing on yourself and, you know, you get somebody who's constantly looking out for the team, but not only their own development, then, yeah, they could be the ones who, who have that impact, really. Um, and then kind of moving on to it, I mean, first of all, like I said to you previously before we spoke, I want to say a big credit to you. I think this is a great decision to make the move to go to Montreal Impact and something yeah. which, number one, we're seeing a lot more of now within the game anyway in terms of young players making the move. But um, especially in terms of as well, like I'm a big fan of the uh, MLS structure and I think that you're seeing um, potentially them going the other way, but a lot of players developing now within that MLS league. So, you know, you've got your Alfonso yes. Davis, you've got your... Um, Adams and there's a lot of players. Your Martinez, your even Almoron, who came across to Newcastle last year. Yeah. Um, what was the kind of main thing that kind of just made you decide? You know what? Number one, I want to go across there. Um, I know you mentioned about the the thing of the 23, but um, going across the Montreal Impact and the move from England, London, all the way to America. Yeah, no, it's been it's been very hard obviously because what's going on in the world it's not been easy that's not helped but I had a few I played three games before everything happened and it was brilliant just the exposure of traveling you go four days before a game because of the time difference so you've got to get used to that you go from Montreal where it was snowing to then we go and play in Costa Rica where it's boiling hot and then from Costa Rica we go to Texas and you play in the heat there it's such a big learning opportunity for me um, playing in front of I don't know 30,000 fans every week instead of travelling to a go and play in a college for the 23s it's just such a big yeah. difference and I feel I can definitely learn from that and as well as also living on my own um, that's not been easy but it definitely makes me grow up and it makes me appreciate my football a lot more as well because Whereas when I was in England, I said it to someone earlier that coming here, it's been a bit of a, I'm solely focusing on football. Whereas I haven't got that distraction of, oh, I can go out with my mates there. I can go go here, go there. Because no, no one's here. It's just football every day. Then on my off day, I do the right things. Although I was doing the right things there, I haven't got the opportunity to even have to say no. So it's yeah. been very good for me to come away from England and like learn and train myself to what I want to be. Yeah, I, again, I think it's interesting that, especially within coaching anyway, so many people neglect the other things from the technical side of things. So everyone obviously yeah. talks about, you know, technical, 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 you know, playing the game, which is obviously the most important aspect. However, they forget all of these other bits, the psychological bits. Like I just mentioned there, you know, it's not only you're going over there to develop and play yourself, but like you said, you're also building yourself as a person and, you know, dealing with, like yeah. you said, going there on your own. Um, I know that as well, you know, in Canada, it's not only obviously American speaking and, you know, I'm sure yeah. there's going to be things like that you're going to have to overcome in terms of a language barrier potentially. Um, and, you yeah. know, even like you said, the social aspect, because, you know, you're up and then you're leaving family and friends over here and then it's, you know, now, like you said, but there is positives. You mentioned about being able to yeah. purely focus on football. And I think that that's great because at the end of the day, that's what you're going out there to do. Um, and yeah. you mentioned it earlier on as well about, you know, being at Montreal Impact, especially as well under somebody like uh, Thierry Henry. What, what's that like? That must be incredible to sort of gain the experiences and, you know, be able to go, this is my manager. Yeah, no, to learn from someone like that, obviously, being in England, I've grown up watching him and over the course of working with him, I've had chances to sit down and talk with him and just learning like the best players he's played against, the best defenders he's played with, the grounds. It's just even on like away from the pitch, as well as he's my manager on it, he learned, teaches me a lot off of it. And it's something that I wouldn't have got if I stayed in England. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I think you mentioned that, which is interesting because it's one of my pet hates when I'm coaching people and we say, like, you know, we're going to be doing defending. And they yeah. usually, you know, there's a typical thing of, oh, great, we have to do defending. But all it is yeah. is attacking flipped on its head. Um, and yeah, like yeah. you said there, I mean, often, again, not all the time, but some people will try and think, oh, do you know what, the best coach for me to go to is somebody who potentially is so purely defensive within their coaching. Well, actually, like you said, you played against, or you're, you're playing under, should I say, somebody who is, is renowned as one of the world's best ever strikers. Yeah. And getting an insight, 
I mean, I'm sure you don't mind giving too many you, ideas away now, but yeah. No, what do you, what didn't you like as a player? What, what did players do to you that, yeah, you hated playing against? What did players do on your team? Because obviously the era he played for Arsenal, you had Sol Campbell, yeah. players like that, and they're top, top defenders. So he's been around them on the training pitch with them. He would have seen what Wenger would have told them. So it's just, yes, yeah, someone I can learn a lot from. That makes makes total sense, and again, it's, it's credit to I said to make a move and getting that inspiration and that motivation from him as well. Um, obviously, yeah. again, you've not played for too many clubs in that sense, but you played for obviously different age groups at Tottenham, and obviously now over in in the MLS. Um, as yeah. a player, what kind of motivates you in terms of bringing the best out of you um, in terms of performance, but then also looking at it from again a kind of coaching perspective, I suppose. Um, what type of coaching? suits you really because again some players are motivated by you know getting shouted at and that motivates them to do better some players like the onus of going look set me a problem and i'll sort out the the the, the solution for it what what brings the best out of you and what yeah. kind of ones have you experienced i've experienced a lot of them coaches that have shouted coaches that have not spoke to you and just let you deal with it yourself and come up with the answer, coaches that have put an arm around you. But I don't, I feel I respond well to all of them. Um, I've had a rejection as well from coaches where they say, like uh, there was a, for example, the Euros were coming up for the under 17 England and I'd played every game leading up to it. And then it got to it and I didn't get picked and I was fuming and whatnot. And, but then I thought, all right, I'll go, and, I'll go and get back in that team. And then the Euros come they done whatever they done at the Euros, and then the camps after that, I was back in there, and I think that Tottenham said like they saw how hard I worked because they knew how much it hurt me. Um, so yeah, the rejection side of it made me more hungry and thought, all right, I'll go and I'll go and do what what I have to do to get back in your team, and I done that, and yeah, I think that helped me a lot. Nice. I think it's important as well from a manager, and again, like I said, I know that obviously throughout academies and you know. Not all the time, and I suppose at a club like Tottenham, it's not often like that. But I know that quite a few academies, the transition of coaches happens so often because, you know, I think you know, probably a typical lifespan of a coach at an academy throughout the sort of, especially the younger age groups, you're looking at two or three years before either A, they move on to a new venture, B, they decide, you know what, I'm probably not going to get any higher within the club, so I'm moving on. Yeah. So that must be quite difficult to, to deal with from a player's perspective, but then also quite refreshing because you get potentially new ideas. Um, but like yeah. I said as well, um, I want to move on to that bit actually about the uh, you sort of your international side of stuff. Going to play, obviously, number one for your country, but number two, in a totally different environment. I mean, I suppose it helps set up in, in a way, kind of you move to the MLS because you're playing in different countries. But um, what's that like? Because obviously you'll have your club telling you to play a certain style in a certain way. And especially being at Tottenham for yeah. so they mold you into the kind of player that you are. And then mm. obviously you move into an international setup, and then it's kind of totally different. What, what's what's that like? Yeah. I'd say the the early stages of England was very much was very similar to Tottenham. Uh, they wanted you to play out, express yourself, because we were still only under sixteen, under seventeen. Yeah. So it was it, they weren't trying to produce players for the first team, or they were, but it was very unlikely that under sixteen England will then go and get in the the first team so it was very much just express yourself do well but I'd say the more like under 18s under 19s where I've played it's been a lot more structured and things have changed where at Tottenham we'll play this type of way but at England they want you to do this and it's, it's very hard adapting to that because when it comes to the game you just you sort of program to do what you've been told at your club because you do it every day but then they don't want you doing that so it's hard to to flip that yeah, I agree. And I think it's the same with uh, new managers as well. Um, you know, similar thing. Again, like I said, yeah. you're, you're being programmed. And, and especially when managers, say, for example, fire players based on the way that they play and what they, they like, how they think they'll fit into their team. Like you said, when you go to an England setup and it's, you know, they want you to play a different type of football or even potentially set up differently because you're playing against a certain opposition. Yeah, it must yeah. be hard to do that. However, in terms of, like you said, especially at that younger England age groups, Again, it's still about the development. And I think one of the things which has definitely helped um, is that whole England DNA that's come in place. So that now, yeah, yeah. you know, throughout every England age group, you know, it's going to be the same or similar stuff. So I suppose 
complicated because you're obviously learning two different ways of playing and depending on yeah. maybe your club career, um, maybe more than that. But, you know, it is that sort of thing where I suppose you just have to make the transition as a, as a player, really. Yeah, you just have to get on with it and do do what they want. Cause, but it's also hard because you're not, you're not with England for a long amount of time. You're there yeah. for a week, two weeks, 10 days. So it's very hard to learn that within that short period of time. And then, then you go away back to your club for three months and then you just flip yeah. back to that and you go back again and you forget it all because we well, don't forget it all, but you, it's hard to then yeah. put it back into your game because, yeah, like I say, you're programmed to play in a certain type of way. Yeah. And again, like you say, cause you've been away for so long. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. You know, it's just natural natural way of doing it. turn back to how you how you normally play. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I totally agree with that. Um, and then, kind of looking at a sort of a whole then in terms of your career so far, um, what kind of has been the real standout point for you? Would you say along your development journey, and whether that be, do you know, what something early on in your career, just like you know, potentially getting into into football, or yeah. whether it be the, the more current thing, making the move across. Yeah, I'd say it's got to be the the move across here because it's allowed me to make my first team debut to play against players that I've grown up watching, play with players that I've played at the top and I've grew up watching and just learning from them, working with a manager here. So, yeah, this is definitely the biggest moment in my my career. Nice. And again, I think it's credit to you folks for making that move and an opportunity and uh, hopefully soon the football will get started up and like you said you can you can get back into the first things so again probably for every footballer this is and even manager and coach and whoever but you know you said you was playing beforehand you played in a couple of games yeah. beforehand and then you've had this break and probably itching to get back out there and just just want to play again yeah um just want to yeah, no, I appreciate it. And I was going to say, um, so um, kind of want to ask you two questions here. Uh, number one, it's kind of a conventional question that you've probably been asked hundreds of times, but then I want to kind of put a spin on it as well. Um, so number one, what would your advice be for young players? And I think coming from yourself as well and the experience you've had, you know, players should take away, a lot away from this and, and listen up well. Yeah. Um, but then secondly, what would your advice be to coaches? And what I mean by that is one of the big things, which I believe anyway, is that, you know, coaches can have their own ideas and, and styles and philosophies, but one of the important things and the most important thing is understanding their players and what yeah. players respect. So, yeah, what would your advice be to players and what would your advice be to coaches to be aware of? Players just just work hard. Um, I, I know it's the cliche one, but if you don't work hard, I've seen players who have been better than me, ability, um, but they haven't gone as far because they don't work hard or, or whatnot. And it's the same players who don't have a lot of ability, but because they work so hard, they've got to got to where they've got just because of hard work. Um, and I say coaches, I don't really know. Yeah, you got you got to understand the player, what the player needs. Um, certain players like an arm around them. Certain players respond better off a coach like shouting at them. So yeah, you've got to know what how to get the best out of your player and. What, what they respond to and what they don't. Nice. I think the player one makes perfect sense. Like you said, it's you've got to work as hard as you possibly can because, again, credit to it yourself and the experiences you face. Like you said, there's football so cutthroat, people are in, out, in, out, in, out, and it doesn't matter which stage of their development they're at, it's, it's, it's going to happen if they don't put the work in. And, and I'd also say that being at a place like Tottenham where players have been there for so long, they get comfortable. Yeah. And... And they they see the big the big training grounds, people driving in in nice cars, and then when when something don't go their way, they go to the outside world and they're like, Fuck, what what what's this? And yeah. I was lucky enough to be around people that have played at every level, that have played non-league, that have played lower leagues, League One, League Two. So I know what it's like, sort of. And if I was to ever have not got a contract or had to go elsewhere, I don't think it would have been a big reality check. Whereas for some players, they've always been in that bubble. And when that day does come, it's, it's a big a big shock. And sometimes they just fall out of the game just because they can't, they don't want to go and play lower leagues or they don't, they can't because they don't adapt. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's like mind blowing what you just said it's true you know so many people they get so comfortable and don't get me wrong yeah. there's no discredit for anyone who is playing for the same team the whole career but 
yeah. I agree. I think that from, from my perspective, anyway, I think it's so important that players experience different environments because, yeah. like you said, you know, whether it be I've spoken to players and they've gone out on loan and they've said to, you know, like they've been from a big club and you're going into a lower league club with players that are literally playing for their, their, their mortgages. Their, 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 yeah. 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 Um, and I think, you know, again, people could look at your story and go, well, and why didn't you say it, Tottenham? And you potentially could have got more money and, you know, things like that. But actually, yeah. you know, you're looking at it from a much different perspective and a, a different eye. And you go, well, look, I can get more development here. I can play football, which I want to do. Um, can work with, work with as good a coach as, if not better, people with better experience in the game. Because yeah. I'm not being funny, you don't get more yeah. experience than who I'm working with here. And, yeah, it's, it's, people have said that, well, yeah, Tottenham's, Tottenham's this. Yeah, but I wasn't. I wasn't playing for Tottenham. I was playing for the youth, the reserves. Yeah. If I was all the Veyrold, yeah, I'd stay. But yeah. I wasn't. Yeah, and it's interesting as well. You mentioned earlier on, which I think you hit nail on the head there, was when you said about the um, environment that is set within those twenty-three leagues. Now I know yeah. they've changed it and they've developed it. And listen, I'd say it's in a better setup than what it was. But I agree. Yeah. You still got players potentially who are coming back from injury in other clubs. Going right, do you know what? I'm going to use this as a bit of a knock around to to get back yeah, to yeah. business. And I agree. I, I, I myself, I wouldn't want to be in an environment where you know you're trying to play for your club, for your shirt, for your pride, for yourself, and yeah. meet other players who are like well, it's, it's just a bit of a kick around for me, sort of thing. So I think, like you said, going across to America, and you know, in the past, people have criticised the American League. Listen, I said I love the American League. I think the number one, the, the players it's creating exciting yeah. people are taking like, attention to it now and like you said playing in front of that many people week in week out going to these different environments one week snow next week bright sun you, you're not going to yeah. get that over in England 100% no. so yeah, I, I yeah think... it's, very, it's very different and yeah it's a very good up and coming league I know people say people look at it and people go here to retire or pick up a bit of money but it's not it's not like that's all the the pace of the game is a lot higher. My first game, I thought, like, I was the same, like, living in England, hearing people say, oh, it's just that people go there for a jolly up, and but it's not, it's so quick, and the players you are playing against have played at the top, players like Nani, Chicharito, Vea, they've all, they've all been at the top, and to come here, they're still not going to lose their professional yeah, of course. touch, they're still going to work hard, they're still going to try, and it's very, as well as all the South Americans, a, a, a lot of our changing room and a lot of the other clubs' changing room are South Americans who are tricky, quick, powerful. So it's you've got every every player that you could create in this league. I think. Yeah, no, totally, and I, I, I agree. I think that you know, you're like I said over here. Say for example, if you carry on playing in that twenty three league, you might be playing against good players. But yeah, some of them you just mentioned there, you, know, you, you can't buy that sort of experience to play against yeah. them and, and develop and learn. So, um, yeah, like I said, full, full credit to yourself. Um, but yeah. like I said, I think, you know, your journey is incredible. And I say incredible because I think that a lot of people wouldn't have taken, and I, I'm going to say risk here, but I don't mean it in risk in terms of there's going to be a negative no, it was, from it. Yeah, but, it was a risk as well, though, because if yeah. things didn't pay off, it's, yeah, it was... If I'm still not guaranteed that things will work out they've only played four games but yeah it's, it's a risk at the same time but again I, I think you know you, you've, you've taken that decision and I think that's one of the big things I said earlier on about it's not just all technical to football you know it's about your psychological side as well when making decisions and, and sticking and believing in those decisions and again yeah. I think that's credit and like you said hopefully soon the season gets back up and running and, and, and you'll be out there and you'll get well into the, the life of it really yeah but no uh, but <laughs> but um, listen, uh, I won't take up any more of your time. I massively appreciate you taking taking part in this. Like I said, I think from a player's perspective, especially, it'll be interesting for them to hear about your journey and, and some of the decisions that you've made and, and the yeah. experiences that you've had. Um, but then also as well from a coaching perspective as well, I think it's just almost equally as important because they need to, like I said, understand the players that they're dealing with and yeah. you know, understand the motivations of players potentially. So... Yeah, hopefully people take stuff away. But um, wait, I won't take up any more of your time. A massive thank you for yeah. joining us. Um, and I'll catch up with you soon, all right? Yeah, no, see you later. Thank you. No worries. Cheers.